we're starting a chapter called Operations with CERDs. And in this video, we're going to do a couple of things to introduce this chapter. First of all, we're going to talk about what CERDs are. And then we're going to have a little lesson which I call Two Solutions or Not Two Solutions. So we'll start by talking about what CERDs are. There are two things that define a CERD. Firstly, a CERD will have a radical. Now, in case you don't know what a radical is, it's basically that square root sign we see. Now, it's not just the square root symbol, it's also the cube root symbol, the fourth root symbol, and so on. Now, just because you see the radical doesn't necessarily mean you have a surd. A surd must also be an irrational number. In case you don't know what an irrational number is, it's basically where you have a decimal that goes on forever and has no recurring pattern. So we'll look at some examples. Let's start with the square root of 2. Bringing up our calculator, the square root of 2 is an irrational number. It has a decimal that goes on forever and there's no recurring pattern. So since this has a radical and is irrational, we can state that this is a CERD. So what's an example of something that has a radical but is not a CERD? Well, what about the square root of 4? The square root of 4 is equal to 2. This is not an irrational number. It is a whole number and therefore doesn't have a decimal that goes on forever. So this one is not a CERD. All right, what about cube roots? Let's say we have the cube root of 5. Bringing up our calculator, the cube root of 5, you'll notice that it has a decimal that goes on forever and has no repeating pattern. So we can say that this is a CERD. A cube root that is not a CERD might be the cube root of 27, which just equals 3. And because it's a whole number and doesn't have a decimal that goes on forever, we can say that it's not a CERD, because it's not an irrational number. Anyway, I didn't want to just define what a CERD is, but I also want to talk about some of the laws that they follow. I'm just going to talk about two of these laws. The first one involves multiplication. Let's say we have the square root of 3 and multiply it by the square root of 5. We can simply go 3 times 5, which is 15, and simplify this to the square root of 15. In fact, we can check this using a calculator. The square root of 3 times the square root of 5, gives us this number 3.872, and it, and it keeps going. So is this the same as the square root of 15? Well, let's check. Square root of 15, and we get the same number, 3.872, and so on. This also works for division. Let's say we have the square root of 10 divided by the square root of 5. Now, 10 divided 5 is 2, so this will give us the square root of 2. Let's check this using a calculator again. The square root of 10 divided by the square root of 5 gives us 1.414 and so on. Now I know that this is the square root of 2, but just to show you, the square root of 2 will equal the same number. Now, I'd like to point out that these two rules are extremely important, and we will be referring to these throughout future videos. Anyway, I think it's time to move on to the next slide, which I've titled, Two Solutions or Not Two Solutions. Now, in previous videos, I've mentioned that the expression x squared equals 9 has two solutions. Either x will equal 3, or x can equal negative 3. And the reason for that is because 3 times 3 is 9, and negative 3 times negative 3 is also 9, because two negatives make a positive. So if this is true, 
What about x equals the square root of 9? Will this also have two solutions? Because when you think about it, whenever you see the square root of 9, you think to yourself, what two numbers multiply to make 9? Well, we know that 3 times 3 equals 9, and also negative 3 times negative 3 equals 9. It's looking like we have two solutions. But there's something important I need to mention here. Usually when we see this symbol, we think it means square root. This is the square root symbol. But that's actually not technically true. It's actually known as the positive square root symbol. There's actually another symbol which is known as the negative square root symbol. In fact, it's more of a combination of symbols. The negative square root symbol is basically your negative sign with the square root next to it. So when you redefine it this way and look at this question, it's actually saying, what is the positive square root of 9? And that is positive 3, not negative 3. So the answer is no. This only has one solution. And that's why when you use your calculator and you find the square root of something, the calculator will only give you one solution because you're actually saying, what is the positive square root of 9? If I wanted to get a negative solution, negative 3, then I need to ask for the negative square root of 9 which will give me the negative solution. Anyway, I also have another question here, and I, I just said, do cubics have more than one solution? For example, what about the cubed root of 8? We know that this is 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. Can it also equal negative 2? What do you get when you multiply negative 2 3 times? Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Well, negative 2 times negative 2 is actually positive 4. And 4 times negative 2 actually equals negative 8. Negative 2 is not a solution to the cube root of 8. Instead, Negative 2 comes from the cubed root of negative 8. So do cubics have more than one solution? Well, the answer to this is no. Every cubic will always have just one solution. Anyway, that concludes our video introducing SIRDS. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.